Hey there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of 3B TV. I'm Brian. This is 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. And we are back. I would love to say that the great bathroom remodel... Hey, I'm filming here, big guy. I would love to say that the great bathroom remodel of 2019 is done, but it is not. Hey! I'm filming here. Keep it down. All right. Um, but we've kind of put it on hold because there were some things on the homestead that we had to get done. My goodness. All right. I can't get an edge, a word in edgewise. There's some things we had to get done. Um, I had some pigs that I had to castrate. I couldn't wait anymore on that. Woo. Boy, he's really loud today. And I also uh, wanted to get some seeds in the soil. Uh, but we do have a functional bathroom. I do, <laughs> my goodness, you're making it difficult today. I do have a functional bathroom, a working toilet, a working sink, a working shower, and really the last thing left to do, and really the last thing left to do is to put up the ceiling, and we've got a few other minor things to do. My big problem, and I'm hoping you'll help me, uh, help hold me accountable. My big problem, sheesh. My big problem is that I get really close to finishing a project like 90% and then I lose interest, I get sidetracked, I get other things that need to get done. For example, I started painting our, our ki kitchen, dining room, living room area. It's one big huge great room. I started painting that about six, seven years ago and it's still not done. Um, so hopefully we're not going to end up in that situation and my goal for this bathroom remodel is not to do that. But anyhow, you didn't tune in to hear about that. On this episode of 3B TV, I want to share with you seven things that I learned from this bathroom remodel about myself, maybe I rediscovered about myself, or about life in general. And these are hopefully lessons that will help me as we move forward with our homestead. The first thing that I learned, or I should say rediscovered about myself, is how bad I am at estimating how much time and how much money it takes to perform certain projects or to complete certain projects. This is a lesson that I learned when we built that coop behind me. I thought that I could build that coop in about three weekends and it would cost me about $800. Trust me, it took way longer and cost me far more money. To build that. Now that coop's not going anywhere. I built it solid, but it cost me way more than $800. Now, on this bathroom remodel project, actually, I didn't do too bad as far as estimating how much it was going to cost me. In fact, I was right in the ballpark, maybe a couple hundred dollars over. And if you take out some of the tools that I bought, then I really nailed it. But time wise, oh my goodness, did I blow that. I thought it was going to take me three days, four days maybe, maybe a week. Three weeks later, and it's still not done. Whew! I learned that I'm really bad. I way underestimate how much time and how much money it's going to take me to do things. The second thing that I learned about myself, and this is something that I didn't realize, is how much of a routine person I am. I am somebody, and I didn't know this, but I need a routine. I have no idea how many times I lost things, misplaced things, um, because I was outside of my routine. I kept misplacing my wallet, misplacing my, my um, keys, misplacing my phone, because I'm used to a particular routine, a particular way of doing things, a particular place for me to, to put things. And when I got outside of that routine of getting up in the morning and taking a shower and, and, and all of those things I just take for granted, it really messed with my head. And so I was putting my phone down in places that I normally wouldn't put it. I was putting my keys down. In fact, right now, my main set of keys, no idea where it's at. I'm hoping that we'll discover them. Only key to my motorcycles on that key ring. What was it? It was the routine. I was used to doing things in a particular order, and because a lot of that does surround or revolve around my, my morning routine as far as getting up in the morning and using the bathroom and taking a shower and shaving, and then at night, kind of the reverse, I'm getting ready for bed, and I didn't have that, it really, really messed with my head. 
and I really learned how much of a routine person I am. The third thing that I rediscovered is the importance of being flexible. I, I joke that in the book of Hezekiah in the Bible, which those of you who are Bible scholars know that there is no such thing, but I jokingly refer to the book of Hezekiah as having a verse that says, Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not get bent out of shape. And boy, did I rediscover that truth during the past three weeks. One thing is for sure, as I said, things didn't go according to plan. Uh, Time-wise, there were so many things where I had to rework the plan as I went along. Now, there's a particular aspect of that that I enjoy because there's a puzzle-solving aspect um, when things aren't going according to plan and you're having to shift gears and kind of that pressure and that tension and I kind of enjoy that, but in small doses. Uh, but I had to keep reworking the plan. I had to kind of, okay, this didn't work out this way. I've got to try something a little different over there. And so I rediscovered the truth that it's very, very important to be flexible. Also, in Brazil, they have a saying that's, that goes like this, quem não tem cão caça com gato. And what that it roughly translated means if you don't have a hunting dog, then you hunt with a cat. In other words, sometimes you have to make do with what you have. And again, that flexibility, understanding that, well, I don't have maybe this particular tool, I don't have this particular item, what can I do to make do with what I have to accomplish my goal? But kind of going hand in glove with that, I also discovered the importance of having good tools or the right tool for the job. So this is my original drill. I've had this drill for a very, very long time. It's a cheap Black & Decker drill. I shouldn't say a cheap drill, but it came as part of a set. Not really exactly high quality. It's an 18 volt drill. And I've just been having problems with it um, where the chuck wasn't releasing right. I have to put it in a vise to remove bits and, and, and so forth. Christmas time, my wife and my father-in-law actually both bought me air compressors. And so what I opted to do was to take the one that my wife had purchased for me and take it back to Lowe's and exchange it for a DeWalt tool set. Now, actually during the winter time, I didn't have an opportunity to use that at all. My first time using that tool set was for this project. So the tool set actually came with a drill, an impact driver, a light, a light, and I believe it came with this saw, well we would call a sawzall, a reciprocating saw. But as part of the deal, uh, at the time they were also at, you could get another tool for quote unquote free. And so I chose to get a circular saw. Before the project started though, I went ahead and it's kind of on the fence about buying this tool, but I bought this multi-tool, oscillating tool, depending on who you talk to. And then as we got into the project, I added to my collection by buying this grinder. Let me tell you something folks, the difference between this drill and this drill, it's like night and day. The funny thing is though, I, out of all of those tools, the tool I used the least was this drill. I kind of laughed at having a flashlight as part of this drill, this toolkit. I, I couldn't imagine why you would ever want this. I was so glad to have this light. The impact driver, which I, again, I had never used one. I thought, my goodness, that's crazy. Why would you need one of those? Why not use a regular drill? I used that thing, again, more than the drill. Absolutely loved it. The oscillating tool, I, I don't know what it would have done without it. I u found so many different uses for that. The reciprocating saw, the, the, uh, the grinder. I discovered the importance of having good tools. But not just that. Not every tool has to be a power tool. We had a wet saw, which I was very, very thankful for. My dad has a wet saw. I was able to use that to cut tile. But I also went, <clears throat> but I also went and I bought one of these. 
And this just is a simple tool that scores the tile and then using pressure snaps it. And we found that we were actually able to make more accurate cuts when we were doing straight cuts with that tool than we could with the wet saw. So again, I discovered the importance, so again, I discovered the importance of having good tools. The fifth thing I learned in this process was how much I enjoy working with my dad. Now I've worked on some small projects off and on with my dad over the years, but this probably was the biggest project. I wouldn't say probably, it was the biggest project that he and I have worked on together to date. And, and quite honestly, when I had planned on doing this, I hadn't really factored in my dad helping me out so much, and yet he was here day in, day out, um, throughout the bulk of the project. Now the last week or so of the kind of the finished work, I did that on my own, but during the, the bulk of it, my dad was here from after work till sometimes not 10, 11, I think one night he went home at midnight. Um, and I just, again, discovered how much joy and how much uh, fun it is to work with my dad. I also discovered how wise, or rediscovered, or I guess maybe I shouldn't say rediscovered, but gained a new appreciation for his wisdom, and uh, it just was an absolute blast to work with my dad. The sixth thing that I discovered is that sometimes I have a tendency to overlook involving my son in doing these kinds of projects. I was getting towards the end of the project and my son said to me, he said, Dad, I don't understand why you keep waiting for Grandpa. You've got a son here at home. Why don't you ask for my help? And folks, that was almost like he punched me in my gut. Um, when you've got a teenager, sometimes it's hard to know when to press them into service, so to speak, and when not to. Um, but I realized how much I had missed out on by not including him in the process. And so where I could, I really tried to make a concerted effort to include him and to ask him to help me with various tasks. But if I could do it over again, I would have involved him in a bigger role throughout the project. I think sometimes I have a tendency to be a little bit too picky about things. And in particular about this, yes, I wanted it to be done. I wanted it to be done right. I wanted to make sure that in tw that I don't have to do this again ever, but at least not for another 20 or 25 years. And at that point, I'm paying somebody else to do it. And so there's a sense to where I want it done right. I'm going to do it myself. Maybe that's not the best approach. And... So as I look forward to doing projects around the homestead, I'm definitely going to make sure to learn that lesson and try to make sure that I involve Brian Jr. in as many projects as I can um, because I hope that he'll find it as much fun to work with me as I did in working with my dad. The final thing that I learned on this project is how much I take for granted. Um, when you don't have a working shower and you're having to drive to your parents to take a shower, when you don't have a working sink in your bathroom and you're having to use the sink in the kitchen to wash your hands, to brush your teeth, to, to take a sponge bath because you weren't able to make it up to your, your parents to, make a, to take a shower, um, when you don't have a working toilet and you're having to use a composting toilet in your basement, you realize how much you take for granted. So folks, those are the seven lessons that I learned during this, or relearned, during this bathroom remodel. And there's some things that, uh, again, they're takeaways that hopefully will be helpful to you. Maybe you can learn from what I learned. Um, they're takeaways that hopefully will help me uh, as we work through projects on our homestead. And as I try to make good decisions with regards to our homestead, that I'll uh, remember some of those lessons that I've learned during the great bathroom remodel of 2019. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks, and until next time, be good. We'll catch you later.